Welcome to NFL World, where the NFL news is reported here first. As for Broncos, running back Javante Williams has a quote-unquote serious knee injury. MRI to confirm the fear is a torn ACL. And losing Javante Williams is like losing the thunder and lightning combination of between Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. The fact that they can sub those two guys in and out and almost gain production is very impressive. You keep those two guys fresh. You don't have to rely on every one guy all the time. You can just go, go, go. Hey, we're going to, okay, Javante, you come in. Melvin, go out for a couple plays. We get a few more plays. All right, Javante, go out. Melvin, come back in. Oh, you know what? Both guys go out or both guys come in. That's what they can do. Now, lose, potentially losing that for the year would be the worst thing that Denver can. Because Denver doesn't look very good right now. But losing Javante Williams will make it just that much harder to win this division in the AFC West. Which is flummox at this point. Jets head coach Robert Sala was talking about Zach Wilson. And he said Wilson is medically cleared for week four against the Steelers. And unless something happens, he's going to start. Which he did start, and he played very well. I want to talk about this because this is very important for Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett was involved in a car accident this past week. He was trying to avoid an animal on the road. He swerved and couldn't get in, couldn't get back on the side of the on the right side of the road and swerved into the ditch. He's okay. In fact, he was going to try and play at some point. Or he tried to play on Sunday and it just never happened. Um, he had kind of injured his shoulder, but he was mostly just scraped up. Uh, he had a passenger in the car, which they were okay as well. A very dangerous sight to see. Uh, NFL player, a very young and very talented NFL player, almost was taken away from us at a very young age. The Patriots... And Mac Jones had to place Mac Jones as officially out for Sunday as Brian Hoyer did in fact start. Hoyer was knocked out of the game with a concussion, did not return. Bailey Zappi took over and did some good things. Like, not, you weren't expecting to win but the, against the Packers, but the fact that you, were, you brought it to overtime and... The Packers only beat you by three after they were favored by like ten and a half, I believe. It was very impressive. And I wouldn't be surprised if Zappi gets to start if Jones can't go next week. However, I also wouldn't be surprised if Hoyer is okay that he may get to start next week. Or we'll just have to wait and see. Now... I want to talk about this because this is very important. The injury to Tua Tungavailoa was a very serious injury. As in the game against the Buffalo Bills, while Matt Milano pushed Tua and Tua's head hit the ground, and a little bit of a whiplash action. And he, when he got up, he kind of started to shake his head a little bit, trying to clear the cobwebs, and started to walk in kind of a little bit of a jog and falling to the point that the offensive lineman kind of had to grab him and not escort him to the, to the sideline, but have the doctors come and grab him take him off the field, which then Teddy Bridgewater took over. But in the third quarter, Tua came back 
because this was before halftime. Tua came back and what was called an apparent back injury. Now I say this to add context because in the game between the Dolphins and Cincinnati Bengals, Tua was playing in that game. And he went and got ta got sacked from a defensive lineman and his head kind of ricocheted off the ground. And it was a very scary sight to see. In fact, NFL Prime Video got, Amazon Prime Video got a lot of flack, which is a term that is used as, they got a lot of people very upset of the replay. Because they showed the replay over and over again of Tua getting sacked. And Tua was knocked out. Tua was on his side. And his fingers all like... He's got a couple fingers that are like this. He's got a couple fingers that are like that. Uh, bent in, bent out. It looked like he dislocated his finger. But his arms were like this. And he was taken, off the, taken out of the game on, via stretcher. And was brought to the hospital. He was conscious when he got to the hospital, which was good. However, they flew him back that night, which everyone was like, "Why would he fly?" Because that changes how your body, how your blood, the blood to the brain, the blood flow, everything becomes a lot thinner. That's the reason why they tell you if you have bad, if you have a blood issue in your body, to not fly because it, you may not be getting enough. Just drive everywhere. So, in saying that, the NFL and NFLPA had already was doing an investigation into that to see if the Dolphins followed the protocol correctly, as Sean Payton said yesterday on NFL Kickoff. For Fox, he said, "There's three, like there's 32 different independent neurologists who are consulting." with the NFL commit for every NFL team. However, each team does it very differently. Some teams are a lot more conservative and say, you know what, yes, you have a concussion, but we're not, like, yes, we, we're pretty positive you don't have a concussion, but we're not going to take the chance. We're just going to keep you over here. You're not, you're, we're not allowing you to go back in the game. Which was the best thing, obviously. But they... The Dolphins allowed Tua back in the game, and then in Cincinnati, four days later, he gets knocked out again. He's not moving, and there was some wrongful blame on Mike McDaniel, the head coach of the Dolphins, who didn't deserve the blame. He was okay. Like it wasn't his fault, as Jimmy Johnson and everyone's trying to put it. It's like it was the doctors that go tell the coach. The coach doesn't just go, hey, I'm putting him back in. The doctors tell the coach, you know, he's fine. You can put him back in. He's okay. So, the Dolphins took action as they fired the independent neurologist that they had. Not saying that he did anything wrong because there was, a in the rule book, there was a little loophole that they could do. But, you put a guy in danger, you can expect to get fired. That's just the way it goes. The NFLPA is also going to have agreed with the NFL to change the concussion protocol for instability. That if a player like Tua could not walk off the field under his own power, they will not be put in at any point. Which I do agree with. Now on to some lighter news. This year is the 50th anniversary of the 72 Miami Dolphins undefeated season. A season they went 17-0 and won the Super Bowl with the late great Don Shula. Every year that there's no undefeated team that makes it to the Super Bowl or wins the Super Bowl, the Dolphins crack a bottle of champagne. Everyone does in that organization for the 72 Dolphins. For the Dolphins, if you can get this and the Eagles lose, 50 years. So you crack that bottle of champagne one more time because no one else can ever do it.
and the Dolphins found a way to do it, even though it did happen in 1972.